Some guys are borderline low testosterone and they're not actually sure if they want to commit to a life of TRT or they just want to hop on and see how it feels and see if they feel better. Hey guys, Fitness Doc here on a really interesting study that looked at the difference in shutdown of the HPT axis between long-acting testosterone and short-acting testosterone. Now, I've done a video before on TRT with no suppression, and Natesto, which is a testosterone product in that video, showed a lot less suppression on LH and FSH levels than longer-acting testosterone, which pretty much shuts down the HPT axis completely. And the reason shorter acting testosterone products don't shut down the HPT axis as much and affect LH and FSH as significantly as longer acting esters is that with short acting preparations, you don't have the huge amount of suppression continual suppression on the GnRH neurons in the hypothalamus. And because you don't have that continual negative feedback, the brain actually can create some endogenous production as well. And in a way, the shorter acting preparations simulate something like the natural production of testosterone and the diurnal rhythm in that naturally you don't have a chronic bleed of testosterone 24 7 that's continually acting in a negative feedback loop in fact naturally you have a pulse and then it drops off again and the brain recognizes this drop off and creates another pulse of endogenous production but with really long acting testosterone you have a continual shutdown of lh and fsh but in this study on male rats it looked at testosterone propionate which is a very short acting ester compared to something like enanthate or cypionate. The terminal half-life of testosterone propionate is about 19 to 24 hours, which is very short compared to cypionate and enanthate, like I just said, which have very long half-lives of about seven to 10 days. In this study though, they compared testosterone propionate with a subcutaneous pellet, which has a half-life of 70 days, which was huge. And what were the results? Well, the long-acting pellets shut down, pretty much decimated LH and FSH levels to virtually zero, but the shorter acting testosterone propionate didn't decimate LH as much. And in fact, LH levels remained pretty close to baseline or control group. And this suggests there is not as strong negative feedback with testosterone propionate as compared to a longer acting testosterone like the pellets. And when they took the testosterone away from the rats, they had a proxy measurement of time to pregnancy, which is basically a good measure of how long it takes the HPT axis to recover. The TP group, testosterone propionate group, took a much shorter time to get the females pregnant as compared to the testosterone pellet group. In other words, the testosterone propionate group was able to recover their spermatogenesis a lot quicker than the longer acting group. So why is this the case? Well, I spoke about it earlier in this video, but the main reason is that shorter acting testosterone, like testosterone with no ester or testosterone propionate, because the ester is cleaved off so quickly by the liver, you're actually mimicking very close to what endogenous production of testosterone is like. A big peak in the morning, dropping later at night, another big peak in the morning. And because the half-life in the body is 20 to 24 hours, if you did everyday administration of test prop and had a peak in the morning, 24 hours later, you'd actually come down again and be ready for your next injection. And you have this nice peak and tailing off every 24 hours, kind of what the body does anyway, naturally. Some of my guys feel better on testosterone propionate because it's very close to what endogenous production is. You would also get this from something like a cream or even TNE, testosterone, no ester. Whereas with a really long acting ester, like a Pella or testosterone undeck, which are really long acting esters, you get basically a huge reservoir of testosterone that's a chronic bleed. And that negative feedback is chronically exerting a negative feedback loop back to the hypothalamus and pituitary gland to turn off LH and FSH signaling. And when that's turned off chronically, some guys just don't feel good on it. LH and FSH don't just turn on testosterone, but there's a huge cascade of pathways, including very vital neurosteroids like pregnenolone and DHEA. When these are turned off, I'm not saying every guy can feel it, but when these are turned off for some guys, they're just more sensitive to these neurosteroids being turned off. And it's just interesting that in this study, which admittedly is just rats, it may not translate to humans, but it shows that you could avoid some, at least some extent of LH and FSH shutdown when you take a shorter acting ester. And that's why some guys actually feel better on HCG alongside their testosterone replacement therapy 
because in a way you are signaling with HCG uh, a mimic of LH, which turns on these neurosteroid production pathways again, like DHEA and pregnenolone. And some guys honestly feel more cognitively sharp and feel like they have better spatial and reasoning and decision-making abilities. And their brain just works better when HCG turns on these neurosteroids and their production again. And the second interesting thing about this study is that it tells us that testosterone propionate and shorter acting testosterone pr preparations may actually be like an insurance policy in a way. You see, some guys are borderline low testosterone and they're not actually sure if they want to commit to a life of TRT or they just wanna hop on and see how it feels and see if they feel better. If you hop on a longer acting ester, you do run the risk. Now, I'm not saying this is gonna to happen to all of you, but there is a small, small risk that you affect your HPTA function and you'll actually be worse off, chronically worse off than you would have been if you just didn't touch testosterone. These are for the guys who are borderline low, maybe 350, 400 nanograms per deciliter, and who are struggling with symptoms. They wanna try testosterone maybe, but they don't wanna shut themselves down. This may be an insurance policy, a shorter acting testosterone propionate may give you an insight into how TRT feels, but without shutting yourself down and affecting your LH and FSH signaling too much, so that if you didn't like it or you want to try other things, you can come off and not be shut down and not be in a worse position than when you first started. So in a way, testosterone propionate may be a tester in that you can use it, insurance policy, come off again, see how you feel on TRT, but you know you can come off again if you need to. Let me know your thoughts, guys, on this really interesting study about testosterone propionate, and I will see you in the next video. Fitness Doc, signing out.